Hello, welcome to Soap and Intuitive Carol. My name is Cindy. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I really do appreciate my subscribers. All the comments have been fabulous. Um, all the thumbs up. Thank you so much. It's, it's, um, it's just lovely. Thank you. Okay, today I want to do sort of, I think, three mini reads. Um, I'm going to take another look at the, um, the Supreme Court and the, the Roe versus Wade decision. I'm going to take a look <clears throat> at Ukraine because uh, Mariupol is just getting annihilated. And there's um, some sort of a, a holiday celebration coming up in Russia on May 9th. I can't remember. It's sort of like an Independence Day sort of thing. Um, and I want to take a look at what's going on there because they're saying that, you know, that is likely to be sort of a trigger date. Um, and the third thing I want to look at is Trump, <clears throat> because this J.D. Lance or whatever his, Bance, um, or whatever his name is, I don't feel bad if I don't actually know his name exactly, because Trump couldn't keep it straight either. Um, <laughs> anyways, I want to take a look at if he is actually, if his sort of uh, picks are going to actually continue to win um, their nominations because, or their, their primary races, I guess, you know, because that's going to make a tremendous difference. One, on the impact of um, um, the way Republicans vote, and I think a lot of Republican strategies, because if it looks like Trump has and is maintaining like a hold, they're going to have to recalculate and not pull away from him. And that, of course, is disastrous for the rest of the world. But, you know. Um, also, before I forget, super important. Um, thank you, and I don't remember who sent it to me, but um, one of my lovely uh, commenters sent me um, a message saying that on May 14th, there is going to be a Woman's March. You can find information about that under the name <clears throat> or the phrase, we will not go back, or we won't go back, I think it is. So um, if you're interested at all in that, that of course is having to do with the, uh, you know, the leaked draft and what it looks like the um, Supreme Court is going to do about it. So there's that. Um, also, just for those of you who might be interested in getting a private reading, I am sort of back on my schedule and back on track. And so um, I am actually booking appointments as early as the middle of February right now. So there's not a very big waiting list. Um, so if you're interested in having a private reading, in the description box below is um, an email address where you can just send me an email and I'll send you the information you need. Okay, let's... Let's start with um, the Supreme Court and Roe. Come on down, I have a question. So I want to take a look at the kind of trajectory of women's rights, trajectory of women's rights, trajectory of women's rights. And, you know, this is what's so terrifying is it's not, if they succeed in this, it's not going to take very long at all for them to go into, you know, go after all kinds of stuff, whether it is, um, you know, the gay community, whether it is interracial marriages. Can you believe that one? My Lord. Um, uh, contraception, like there's a lot riding on what goes on here. So let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so there's definitely a heavy uphill climb. Okay. 
So, right now, that expectation, that right, that achievement has both the, the Ten of Swords, the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Wands sitting sort of right beside it. So, that hope, that expectation, that right, apparently is going to be it defeated. And it is going to be a little bit of a challenge to like fight back or push back against that <clears throat> um, because there is a certain segment of the population and unfortunately a lot of them are political leaders, governors in particular, who want things to go back to the way they were. I know it <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, it's spring. And so you're going to notice that croak in my throat and like that. I, I apologize. Um, unfortunately, some of those governors, I mean, some of them are old enough, you know, that I would think, in fact, most of them would be old enough to have been raised in an environment where um, Roe versus Wade was established. But for some, and, and frankly, they should know better. But for some of them, it is just, there's been such a mad push um, in terms of this being something that the right wing really wants, and they have pushed it for 50 years. So um, <clears throat> I want to take a look at that. Um, but it's like I say, it's going to be it's going to be um, a hard fought battle, battle, unfortunately. <sighs> OK, so as most of you know, the King of Pentacles is my trump card. It showing up here is sort of a very clear indicator that um, he accomplished. He was the perfect puppet for the Republican Party to accomplish this goal. And make no mistake, it was their goal. Um, <clears throat> in many ways, he was not only, what, it, what is that phrase, a useful idiot, to Russia, they say, but very much to American politics because he didn't have an agenda and he doesn't have a moral compass that we can see. So it very much looks like they were able to utilize him to accomplish what they wanted. And frankly, it happened really fast, right? I mean, if you think about it, um, over the course of four short years, he was able to put three hyper-conservative judges on the court. Okay. So this is kind of the thing. As soon as... Um, those laws, if you will, go into effect in different states, you are going to see court cases, court filings pushing back, okay? Because it can't stand. Everybody understands that it can't stand. Um, women are, frankly, too powerful, a voting block. And something like this really motivates, I think, younger voters because some of the basic fundamental freedoms that they've gr grown up with um, are, if not being stripped immediately with this court decision, they can see where down the road more and more of them are going to be. And so you can see that this sort of attitude coming from the court is really, really going to push back. And trust me, they're going to push back. It might take a little bit of time. But I don't think that in the grand scheme of things, it's going to take a tremendous amount of time because I think one of the things that you're going to see, or certainly we can keep our fingers crossed, hope for and vote, um, is that you're going to see um, Republican, not only governors kind of losing some of their seats along the way, but I think the, the, the House votes in terms of... Um, I'm not sure if that's quite what they're called, but like the the state um, legislators, um, I think they're going. Some of those really staunch 
Republicans may lose their seats too. Because, you know, it's not good enough to just vote for a governor. You have to vote blue down the ballot because otherwise you end up with exactly what's going on in some of these states where, yeah, there's people in the legislatures that are, you know, Democrats, but there's more that are Republican. And the governor then ends up, if he's a Democratic governor, finds himself like, hamstrung. He can't do anything because everything he tries to put forward gets shot down. Let me tell you, the judgment on this is going to be harsh. Um, people, women in particular, are really, really not going to be very impressed with finding themselves treated as a second or third class citizen. Um, it's you know, it's very, very sad that so many of the rights and privileges, et cetera, et cetera, that the U.S. has fought for for years um, can be, this is the beginning of that slippery slope where a lot of stuff is going to get rolled back. It would be very interesting to know um, how many of some of these really staunch um, Republicans actually were plantation owners, um, actually owned slaves, actually believed that as a white male, they were really the only ones entitled to have a say. Because I think some of them maybe uh, have reincarnated and are in the current bodies that we are finding so, uh, we're finding their attitude so distress distressing and distasteful. Yeah, it's going to take a big pushback. It really is. Um, but it feels as if going forward, there's going to be enough pushback, enough sort of momentum that there's going to be new opportunities, new chances to sort of right this wrong. So like I said, I unfortunately don't see um, the Supreme Court basically reversing their decision at this time. But I do see it as a huge factor going into the midterms. You know, <clears throat> a long time ago, it seems like 12 lifetimes ago, I made the statement that um, when Trump decided to call the, uh, the COVID virus a hoax, and he started really pushing it. I said, you know, this is the mountain on which he's going to die or the hill on which he's going to die, whatever that expression is. It's going to be over this complete denial of, of what is rampaging around the world. And I see the exact same energy pertaining to this situation where that is going to be the, the, um, the issue that the Republicans are going to fall on simply because the Democrats are going to be so energized. I mean, right now, hold on, I digress. Right now, the last poll said that there were some, now this was prior to the whole Supreme Court thing, but the last poll said something that there was only like 35% of Democrats even anxious to vote, even thinking about voting. And 55 Republicans. What does that tell you? The Democrats have sort of sat back, right? They got Trump out of the office and they went, thank God. Um, and it's like I said before, you can't, you can't give up because as long as they have power and they do, I mean, take a look at every single thing that Biden cannot get through the Senate. Um, as long as they have that power, it's a stalemate everywhere. And so the trick is going to be ensuring that they are stripped of power. It's, you know, it's really sad to see that there's a sort of minority rule of such a big country. Okay, that's my little rant about that. All right, let's move on to the Ukraine. Wow. I don't think anybody, when this thing started, expected that we would be approaching Mother's Day. Um, well, here in Canada, anyways, and different parts of the world celebrate it differently. Um, and, but at different times, I mean. Um, 
that we would be here at this time and place and there would still be ongoing fighting. Um, and I think what's even more interesting is despite a lot of frustration, um, Putin has not gone near or in any aggressive way um, gone after any of the NATO countries. But he sure is determined to um, get Mariupol. And of course, the reason for that is, is it gives him like a pathway to the ocean um, in terms of or the Black Sea or whatever sea that is, um, in terms of being able to um, get goods shipped, right? Let's take a look. One of the other things that's a bit of a concern lately is the farmers of Ukraine, um, because of everything that's going on, a lot of their crops are not going to go in. Um, they are massive producers of corn, of wheat. Um, something else that escapes my brain at the moment. Well, if they're not able to produce, that is going to create a food shortage globally. In addition to that, apparently, um, the Russians are actually stealing um, farm equipment to further hamper um, the Ukrainians and, and sort of one of their main um, you know, sources of revenue. Come on down. You know, these are trying times. They really, really are. Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine and Russia, Ukraine and Russia. Okay, I guess you wanted to stay there. Let's see what you are. <laughs> okay, so we're glad those fell out. Okay, so you have the sun and you have strength. So ultimately, ultimately, I believe that Ukraine is going to tame sort of the wild beast, Russia. I think ultimately they're going to win. Okay, so <clears throat> Ukraine has done a really remarkable job kind of pushing back against Russian aggression. It's interesting, but I, for some reason, I have a feeling that you may start hearing more and more about Russian soldiers who are sort of laying down their arms, who are defecting, um, because the atrocities, atrocities, sorry, you know, my mouth, um, are not minor. And I think that they're actually really starting to play a significant role on um, some of the Russian soldiers, you know, minds, heads. So it feels as if there could be, like we should start hearing maybe about more and more Russian soldiers going, I'm done with this. Um, Putin is going to continue to do what he does, but he continues to remain emotionally sort of, I don't know, kind of a little unstable, right? Um, but he's not so unstable that he is not forcefully moving ahead with his, um, his strategies. And don't forget, he put that general, I can't remember who it was, but it was just a, a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, where he put that general um, in charge. And that general was, um, he's like horrendous. I can't remember, the butcher maybe? I'm not sure what his nickname was, but it wasn't very pleasant. So he is now in charge of things. And he, of course, has one mission and one mission only, and that's to give Putin whatever Putin wants. But... When it comes down to it, um, he's he may win little bits and pieces, Putin I'm talking about, but it doesn't feel as if he's going to win the war. It very much feels like ultimately Ukraine will win. I think that Ukraine may have to give up some of its land. Um, 
And of course, no country wants to do that, especially in the face of such ridiculous aggression. But um, for now, in this time and space, Ukraine stands strong. It is getting a lot of the equipment it needs, a lot of the resources it needs from other NATO countries. It is doing everything it can to push back against this unholy aggression. And I think ultimately, um, you're going to find that Russia pays a price in terms of, um, you know, sort of war crime tribunals. I think that, you know, I don't know if they're going to get Putin because I think he may not be around to get, just saying. But um, certainly there's a sense that he's going to be going off. They're going to be going after some of the generals, some of the right hand men, that kind of thing. So there's ultimately going to be a price to be paid, not to mention what happens when ultimately the Russian people find out that they have been so blatantly lied to and that their sons are not coming home from fighting some heroic whatever they called it, mission, um, they're dead. Because they kind of have a bit of a lunatic in the Kremlin. Okay. So, I have to say energetically, it feels as if the aggression is going to pick up around that May 9th date. And I feel like it's going to have some longevity. Um, I want to, it feels sort of like a couple of weeks where it's going to be really, really super intense. But again, I think ultimately, and I wish I knew what it was, but ultimately, I can't tell you what it was, but ultimately there's going to be some sort of a shift that causes um, Russia to sort of back down or pull back. I don't know whether there's some sort of accidental or on purpose invasion of a NATO country, but I can tell you energetically that the NATO countries are all on sort of red alert. And it's really that sense of they're just waiting for him to make one mistake and they're going to go after him. So we shall see, you know, continue to keep Ukraine um, in your thoughts, in your prayers, continue those domes of protection, the domes of white light, because it is truly a mercenary who is stealing from them. I mean, that's just the bottom line, right? There, there's this person who just wants what he wants and doesn't care the cost. But you know what? Look at justice is coming and justice goes to those who are in the right. It's going to be a lot of sadness. It's going to be a lot of information that comes out after the fact that is gut-wrenching, just gut-wrenching. But ultimately, hmm. Ukraine will survive. It's so interesting, right? Like, look, I'm going to start and finish with these cards. So you have the sun with that blue and yellow um, sky and moon, which, of course, is Ukraine's colors. And then on this card, you have that blue, blue sky and the sunflower, which, of course, is Ukraine's flower. So I think ultimately Ukraine comes out ahead or, or at least salvageable. But, um, it, you know, it's going to continue to be ugly and violent for a little while yet. I think there's just a lot of um, people who are getting really fed up with Putin and his antics um, within his own government, within his own armies. Um, and so we shall see. We shall see where that, um, you know, takes the Russian people as it goes along. All right. Let's go to um, to Trump. So I'm not particularly interested in Trump per se. With this reading, I'm more interested in whether he is able to sort of 
turn himself into the kingmaker. And that's like really important, right? Because if everybody he sort of um, endorses ends up winning the primary, you know, that gives the Republicans, um, sort of the more traditional Republicans, they have to sort of stop and pause because it means that there's going to be more of those kind of, you know, QAnon, right-wing conspiracy types flooding into the U.S. Congress. And we know, we absolutely know, um, because there have been enough tapes released and conversations exposed that the sort of established Republicans are not real impressed with what's going on, but apparently they don't really seem to be able to fight back against it. Um, they're weak as weak as weak can be, and they um, continue to bow down and kiss the ring, if you will. Okay, here we go. Um, Trump as kingmaker, Trump as kingmaker, Trump as kingmaker. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like right now. And like there's primaries that have already started. It was, I think, Ohio where that Vance guy won. Um, but there's more. I know there's another primary coming up somewhere. And they're just going to, I think, continue as we roll through the spring and summer. Um I got to say, he's actually looking like he could have some success. I don't think he's going to have brilliant success, but I do think he's actually going to have some success. And in some ways, that in and of itself is going to create a very large push when it comes to Democrat voters, because you know, they want to ensure that, you know, the blue stays strong. And the kind of the crazier these people are, um, the more the Democrats going forward are just going to sit up and taking notice of it and going, whoa, 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 this, this can't stand. Um, but there are going to be some harsh judgments coming down on some of these uh, nominees, if you will. Um, I don't see their hope as being completely realized or his hope being completely realized. But I also unfortunately have to say right now, it looks as if he's actually going to build a little bit of momentum. I don't know that that momentum is going to hold. I think more and more stuff is going to come out and it's just not going to be good. You can anticipate more infighting within the GOP because what's going on now is so insane that you can't even grasp it. But, you know, I don't remember who said it, but certainly it's a policy that, that um, the wannabe king uh, adheres to, which is the biggest, the bigger the lie, the more people will believe it. Just sort of a sad commentary on people and critical thinking. But that just seems to be the reality that we're in right now. The more outrageous the lie, the more and more people are going to buy into it. Maybe just thinking that it's so ridiculous that it has to be true. And unfortunately, it doesn't. Because you have really some very evil and twisted people manipulating the lie. I think ultimately, though, um, 
some of those people who are winning their primaries may definitely not end up in Congress. And that's, you know, that's where the push has to come from. But, you know, I don't know, you hear more and more talk these days about how, you know, there's not any way at all for the Democrats to hold on to the House and, and the Senate and and et cetera, et cetera. So we're once again just going to check with my pendulum and see how things are going. Okay, so side to side, is it ready to talk? As you know, back and forth, show me yes. And show me no. So back and forth is yes, round and round is no. Here we go. In terms of the 2022 midterm elections, Are the Democrats going to hold the House? Okay. Are they going to hold it by enough of a majority that it um, sort of stops the Republican nonsense? Okay. So then the big question is, we all know, is the Senate, after the 2022 elections, going to remain in favor of the Democrats? Okay, so yes. Is the Senate going to remain Democrat controlled. Yes. Is the Senate, is there going to be a big enough margin to give um, the Democrats a little bit more clout or power? Sort of, just we'll answer that. Is there going to be enough additional Democratic senators to give um, the Democrats a little bit more power? Yes. Okay. And then really, in many ways, the biggest question of all, are there going to be at least three people who are going to be elected who are able to cancel out the Republicans hiding in Democratic clothes? who are currently in the Democratic Senate. Okay, that's a yes. So, at this point, it definitely looks like um, <clears throat> the Democrats are gonna hold. Okay, and that's like a really good thing. Okay, so it's Friday. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Um, don't forget that on Saturday morning, the weekly crystal readings are released. Um, and that's what I know. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, take care. Be well. We'll see you really soon. Bye-bye.